defense, one hand front choke defense against the wall. The attacker's grabbed me around the throat and he's pushed me back into a wall. And he's using the pressure of his body to create a lot of tension in my throat, right? You can see my voice is changing. This is because it's a legitimate threat. It looks like this. Very simple, very straightforward technique. Like all choking defenses, Elio recommends as soon as the neck is touched that you tighten your, your neck muscles, right? So you tuck the chin and you flex the neck muscles and you can even shrug the shoulders a bit if you like. This helps to concentrate all of the tension into an area that at least protects the trachea or the carotid artery somewhat. Now, another important thing to remember is that like all chokes, you don't have long to defend. It's not too long with someone who's much bigger and stronger that your windpipe or carotid artery is going to remain in a very safe condition. So you need to act quickly and that means you have to train the technique again and again and again here so that if we're ever attacked in this way we can do this on the street properly because it's second nature, it's in the muscle memory. The other equally important thing besides tensing the neck muscles is like all of Elio's movements, this has to begin in base. So as soon as I'm touched and put against the wall and I tense the neck, tuck the chin, I also have to widen my stance, make my knees soft, and be in base. Now the rest is very simple. The hand that's farthest away from the choking hand is going to slap the inside of this person's arm, inside of the choking arm, off. And the reason we're a little bit specific about going with the opposite hand is the same reason that we're very specific about bending all the way at the waist to take the head out when we do this escape, when we do this defense. Because the thumb is the weakest part of the hand and the thumb will be on whatever side is closest to the hand that's going to hit. So when I want to hit, I want to take it off towards the thumb side. If I do this, I may get it off, but chances are it's not going to be as easy. Whereas the thumb, look, even with just a little pressure, you can squeeze, with just a little pressure, the thumb moves because it's the weak part. To add some force to the slap, I use my hips like this. I just twist the hips. This is significant here because since I'm based, I'm grounded, and the power is going to come through my feet, legs, into my hips, and allow me to twist my entire core. But I want to combine this slapping with a twist to remove the hand. The other advantage to twisting to remove the hand is that it's imperative in aerial system to follow this up with an elbow strike. And because my hips are already cocked this way, my core is already cocked this way, it makes it equally effective when I unwind to throw the elbow strike. Another advantage here is that because the person puts a lot of pressure and is really using their strength and weight on me, You'll see, when I slap the hand, watch, he'll fall towards me, right? And he's gonna catch his balance. Before he does, I'm already back with the elbow strike. So when you train this with each other, get in the habit of putting this hand, even better is this hand, up and across the face like this to protect yourself from the forthcoming elbow strike, okay? So let's go again. Tense the neck muscles, tuck the chin, find a base, twist the torso and slap with the opposite hand and then unwind with an elbow strike. Okay, nice and controlled. Let's go. That's it. We're good.